Hello everyone and thanks for coming back and joining me at Angie B Crafts. So today what I've decided to do is to just go through the process of making a mixed media canvas. So I've got this small canvas that I'm going to be working on. It's just a stretch canvas. I got it as a pack of three in the works, so it is just a cheap canvas. Um, apologies for the state of my hands, I've been doing quite a bit of crafting today. Um, so we're going to start off with this and then we're just going to build up the layers until we're happy with it as a mixed media piece. Um, starting off with Seth Apter Eyes Ink Dye Sprays and see where we end up. So let's get going. I'm going to start off with some red. That one's called Pomegranate. On some of this purple, and then we're going to use the, the purple's called lavender. This one is my favorite, which you'll know if you've watched any of the videos where I've used this. Now, I'm purposely putting some of the spray, I'm going to come back in with the other colors um, around the outside edges because I like the edges of my canvas to vaguely tone in. You can see, obviously, I can only see certain parts of it. Okay, so there's my base layer. I'm not going to move it around any or anything. I'm just going to now get, this is going to be my mop up for this. So I'm just plonking, this is an MDF piece. I'm just putting it in and seeing what we pick up. Usually I tend to use my um, art journals. Oh, how good's that looking? Oh, you're carrying on dripping. Okay, drip onto here then. No, I keep missing it. There we go. Let's get some drips onto there. Oh, that's looking fab. Anyway, um, so yeah, I tend to use my art journals, but I thought, well, why not use a bit of MDF? Because I'm doing more work on MDF at the moment. Why not use it as my mop up as well? Next, we have to give it a bit of a blast. So as you don't get deafened, I will speed up any blasting that I do. There is the dried piece, but it's looking a bit naff. I'm just going to pop this to one side, but we'll come back to it. Um, so what I'm going to do then is add in some other layers. Now I've decided while I was heating that up that I'm going to introduce some distress oxide colours just as a little bit of a variant so I haven't got them out so bear with me uh, I think So the two that I've gone for are black soot and wilted violet. So the wilted violet obviously is still the purple. I'm just going to pop that down, give it a bit of a wipe. And I'm wondering if maybe we need to add some... Um, oh, it'll come to me gloss sprays as well but we'll see how these look so I've purposely added water so we got a little bit more movement but also we then start the oxidization process so remember with mixed media it's all about your layers so don't worry if you put a layer down and think I don't like it or if you put a layer down and go I really like it but I know I'm going to add something on top of it it doesn't matter it's about building it up and even if you only see a tiny little piece of the layer underneath it's still adding interest to your piece and making your piece unique okay another blast with this okay so that's starting to get a little bit of interest I'm not sure that I like this color but I'm not going to panic about it because we're going to be adding lots of other things in so it's absolutely fine 
Next thing I'm going to add in is my Pretty Gets Gritty Gritty Granite Paste. Now this I desperately need to order a new jar of because I'm nearly out of it. I think I use it in pretty much every mixed media project I do. So there's very little left in here. So I need to get in touch with Lynette from Pretty Gets Gritty and get some ordered. So I'm just putting this on at the minute in the areas that I think it would suit or where I want to put it and again this is about the process the process of making and this is what I love about mixed media is it is about what you want to make as an individual obviously if you're taking commissions for your work then you need to take into consideration what the person who's asking you to do the work wants but a lot of mixed media is just about what do you want to use and put in and how do you want it to look and don't be shy about using your products just slap them on and see what happens now at the minute I've only got one colour of this paste but I know it does come in other colours and I need to get the other colours I shall have to invest in some of them as well as a replacement for this one right so that's going to do me for that for now I may well come back and use it again but I also want to add in some other colours now I'm liking purple and I've picked up my eyes ink ice purple now some of these have got the English words yes this has rose this is called rose purple oh well um, and I love the, what, the way you can get texture with the eyes ink ice it's a translucent product so it is going to show you some of what's underneath so remember that when you're using it that you're going to still see some of the colours underneath I'm going to try and just bring it down a little bit on the side just because I'm not keen on this pink I seem to this reddish colour is rather than a pink I seem to have used a bit of a bit of a lot as in a bit too much so I'm just going to try and get some of the texture in along the sides as well just to mask some of that colour I could just use another spray on it but I want to add the texture in I love the eyes inks because they come in these squeezy bottles and it's just a really interesting way of getting them out it just makes me smile you can get obviously acrylic paints in similar bottles it's just something that I like you just literally screw your bottle up to get it out but I think it gives you better control so each time I'm applying this I'm putting it on and then I'm stippling it almost like a little bit of Artex good old fashioned Artex I don't know what Artex is called in other countries so if you're not from the UK you might not know what Artex is um, it's um, decorative plaster work on the ceiling where you get stippling and the likes it's not mouldings it's actually a sort of trowel applied stippling and things as opposed to a mould right I want some more of that up on top now so I'm going to add it in where it's coming from the sides just continue that along so this isn't aiming for anything in particular this is just putting down colour and texture as it feels appropriate while I'm doing it now I'm not liking some of the lines that I'm getting so I'm going to come in at a different angle to just remove the lines and just to make it a little bit more stipply as opposed to lines. Now I may well come back in with a different colour and put some lines on but I don't want lines on that one. Okay so we'll put that to one side for now. What should we do next? Right I'm just going to heat this a little bit So this is now feeling a little bit spongy, a little bit, the, the eyes ink tends to feel a bit sticky and that's fine, don't worry about it. So we're starting to get a little bit more structure and interest there. 
what else do I want to add on there? Right, I want to add some crackle glaze. Now I've gone with a crackle glaze for turquoise. And I'm now wondering if it's what I want to do. I'm going to put that back to one side. And I'm going to get us something that we can start working with on top. Right, so here is a tub of cogs. Okay, so I'm going to put three cogs on. And I want that one to be the biggest. Then we can have that one. And then we can have that one. Right, so just at the minute, they're looking very in your face, don't matching at all. So we need to start adding colour to them. So we'll pop this to one side and we'll start adding colour. So I'm going to start using the same colours that I used for the background, but I'm not going to use the pink. So we'll put some black on, put a little bit of the purple on. And I think we'll put some of the purple distress spray as well. And then a little bit more black on top just to take that back a little bit. So you can still see some of that purple coming through. And what I tend to do is lift my pieces up. As you can see, there's lots and lots of ink underneath. So let's get this piece that we're using as our mop up and do some more mopping up. So what I'm thinking I'll do with this in the end is add some other bits to it and then put some resin over the top of it. Because if you've watched any of my videos you will know that I have recently discovered resin. Oh it's so exciting. I'm wanting to put resin on everything. I've already used most of my first set of bottles and I've only had them a week. It's very exciting. Right, I'm going to blast these. So we've got these and obviously they're, the colour's fine. I don't know if you can actually see the colour. Let me move this lamp in a little bit. So you can see there we've got some of the purple going on there as well. I'll leave that light further over like that. Okay. So we need to add some texture. So I'm going to go back to my remnants of this. Now I only need a little bit at a time, so I'm just putting a little bit onto my palette knife and then splitty splattering. That's a technical term, you know, splitty splattering. I just love making up words. I don't know which side I prefer on that one. I think I prefer that side. So we're going to splitty splatter on there. Get a little bit more. So this is just random application. I'm not particularly worrying about where it goes. I'm not wanting to cover the whole thing because you want to be able to see the colours underneath, but I do want to add texture. And the reason that I like the granite paste is because it's got kind of a little shimmeriness to it, which I just really like the look of. Okay. So that's that used. I'm going to pop them to one side, let them start drying themselves, and I'm going to get some other texture paste. Right, so I've now picked up my lovely gold, copper, sorry, not gold, copper, yes, copper kettle cosmic shimmer texture paste, and I'm going to apply it onto here. Now I've picked up this stencil, and I think I'm going to use some of the words off it but I'm not going to use them necessarily in their entirety. Helps if you can get at that, Angela. Kind heart. Let's see if we can lay this flat to be able to get the whole word. We'll see how it comes out. Because this potentially is going to be our sentiment. If it works, and if it doesn't, it's just more texture. So this is actually, I believe, the first time I have tried to put words through a stencil on a canvas. 
interesting and it's because the canvas is it divots in under the pressure of actually holding the stencil it's not as straightforward as doing it onto card or paper but hey we've done it right let's scrape off some of that so this isn't this is a pretty gets gritty stencil oh that looks good kind heart I'm actually liking that I don't think I'm going to add any more stenciling but I am going to use some of this copper kettle in little pieces mixed in with some of the other textures so again I'm not being exact as to where it goes I'm just applying it and see what I end up with and I think I'll also put a little bit on some of the cogs it's um oh, that's a bit much it's quite nice using the different textures together and it's about experimentation try it if you like it do it again if you don't don't it's uh, quite a good thing to live by when it comes to mixed media give it a go see what it's like if you don't like it don't do it again so we're just adding a different color a little bit of texture when we heat these up bear in mind because they contain plastic they're gonna do bubbling as I said before I like bubbling I like the effect it has if you want it to look more spiky than bubbly then just let it dry naturally do your stippling and let it dry you tend to get still get some of the spikiness but it tends to be a little bit more bubbly particularly with this copper kettle the um, gritty paste will work better with the heat if you want it to maintain its stippled effect but the this texture paste tends to bubble quite a lot right heat gun again i'm just going to heat across everything So that's now dry. I don't know if you can see now, we've got lots and lots of texture on the lettering and that's because it bubbled and then I heated it to the point where the bubbles burst. So we get a little bit more texture. You can see on the letter T, there's a little bit more smoothness because they didn't burst as much and that's fine. It's just about getting those different textures in place. Right, so we're nearly at the point of starting to put things together, but I still feel that I need some more color and I'm thinking we now have an acrylic base across the whole of this so we can start adding in alcohol inks so here's my alcohol ink tray and I need a little brush let's find a suitable little brush there's a suitable little brush oh a little brush that's covered in black okay so you're not actually suitable mm. You've got white on you. There we go, that one will do. I'll do one with this one. I'll go with this one. It's a much smaller one. So we'll literally go with a tiny brush. So I'm going to start to use the alcohol inks just to again bring in more colour. But I'm thinking I might start bringing in something greenish. Almost a bit, a hint of verdigris ish. What about Laguna? I think Laguna would look nice. So I'm not going to apply straight to the canvas. I'm going to pop a couple of drops down onto my mat and then I'm going to apply them with a paintbrush because then I'm choosing exactly where they go rather than them running to wherever they want to go. So it's again just about adding hints. I don't want a mass of green to suddenly appear on my project it's about adding hints of colour. One thing that you'll notice is it really stands out on top of the uh, copper 
because the copper is kind of metally and alcoholic it's go really well on top of anything met metallic so I really like how that's ending up let's bring some copper into there so copper and pink are always going to make purple copper and pink no turquoise and pink even are always going to make purple and that's fine because we've already got purple on the project I'm just adding little hints and then we need to add little hints onto the letters. We need a little bit more alcohol ink. Remember alcohol ink evaporates because it contains alcohol. So don't put out loads, just put out one or two drops. You can use it in a um, palette if you want to. I just tend to use my matte as my palette. Hmm, not sure that I like that. Now I've done it on the letters. I like it on here. Not sure I like it on the letters. So I need to look for a different colour. Ooh, what about pink pearl? So this one is one of the it's the only pearl one I own of the alcohol inks. Um, so they have pigment that sits at the bottom. I think it's mica to give it the pearlescent look. So you'll notice it starts to fizz, which is kind of cool. And bear in mind with alcohol inks that the top colour kind of takes away from any colours you've already put on. It becomes the lead colour. But remember also that green or turquoise and pink make purple. So we're going to get some purple going on here, but I don't like that green on it. So that's fine. Well, that's better. Yeah, I like that better. Right, pop that to one side over there because I want to also add some onto here. And I'm going to stick with the pink because I rather like how that ended up looking. So you can stop at any point. You don't have to keep doing all these little add-on bits. But personally, I think they're what's make, what makes the project. So do it to a greater or lesser degree, depending on what look you're going for. I like adding these little bits on. I think these are the bits that make it interesting. Because the laying down of the initial colour in that, that's a quick job. And it doesn't doesn't require a lot of focus whereas this requires focus attention to detail decision making about where you want things to be and how you want them to look so it's a lot more specific around your preferences whereas laying down spray colors yes you choose the color but sprays are going to spray they'll spray wherever they go you don't necessarily have a choice in it right so I'll just hold those up for you to have a look at so you can see the different colours that are on them so there's hints of pink and green on each of them now okay right let's put the alcohol inks away I think we've done enough with them So you don't have to use lots of a particular medium. You just can just incorporate more or less of it as you please. And now it's about deciding where these need to go. I'm almost tempted to stack them like that. Oh, I quite like that layout. I'm quite liking the colour. Right, I'm going to pop them down like that. So I need my gel medium. Again, I use the Pretty Gets Gritty gel medium. I do really like this one. It is glossy, which I prefer a matte finish on most things. But gel medium, the way that they're made, the science of which I don't know, if you want them to be matte, they're not going to dry clear. 
and I'd rather it dry clear than it be matte. It's the, the, the more important of the two is the dry clear because I don't want clumps of white. If you do end up with clumps of white, I did on a previous project show you that you can just add in bits of colour once the glue's dried. So it's absolutely fine, but just to be aware, if you know that, you can make an informed decision as to what you will and won't use on which project. So this has been a relatively quick one for me. There we go. So I'm not worrying about where I'm putting this on here because I know it needs to stick onto here. But rather than going, oh, it has to align there, I've just put it all over the back. There we go. I quite like that. I think that's probably done. Let's have a look. Yeah, I quite like that. So there we go, there is a mixed media piece. Most of the products used on here are the Pretty Gets Gritty, apart from the colorization. Um, and I hope you like it. I think it's quite a cool project. I'm quite liking the way the words came out on it as well. I don't know if you can see them clearly. There you go. Kind heart. And there's the cogs. So you can see there's a lovely sheen coming off on the um, eyes ink as well. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll join us again. Don't forget to click like, press on the bell, get subscribed, make sure that you can get notifications when I put videos up. Um, and also join us on Facebook and Instagram at Angie B Cards and Crafts and Angie Mary B. Thanks very much. Bye.